Welcome everyone to our show. As you know, I'm your girl Kilbury Love and today we have our special guest, Kishma Seri. She is a multi-layered individual. I do not know where to start, okay? So she has her brand African Organics. Yes. She has her books. She has two books, I believe. Yes. For right now. Maybe she has more by the time you're, really, you're watching this. <laughs> and she also is one of the founders of Thou Art Poetry Group. All right, where are we gonna start? How are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. Um, I'm in need of some nature therapy. So ah. The river has been calling my name, but that is why I'm good. All right, that is, that's good. I cannot even begin to imagine what that schedule is like. And I believe you are a mother as well. Yes, I'm a mother and um, a reporter. And uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it can be busy. <laughs> I know I'm the one wearing the hat, but you wear way more hats at the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But today we're going to be a little bit more focused on your poetry. Is that alright? Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Fine. So I wanted to know what exactly inspires you to write, to do what you do. Tell me. Um, I think it's for me, it is, um, it's, it's a saving grace. Um, writing is, even the hats that you mentioned are the ones that are not seen. Writing is what keeps it together. Um, it's what keeps me together. Uh, whether it be something positive or negative or something that I haven't encountered, um, writing is what allows for me not to lose my mind, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I think we generally live in a society where we have to wear different faces. You know, um, Cabri Love is not the same Cabri and her sisters or her dad or we, you know, we are all multifaceted. But I think art allows for authenticity to, to show up. Mm -hmm. I think the one place you can be your true self is art. Okay. And um, I think the more hearts that you have and the more things that you have to balance. And a lot of our various traumas, but when you go to that space where you can just... It's just be yourself. Exactly. So for me, it is that, it is that salvation point. Okay, what is it like when you perform spoken word? You're actually letting many people into that space. Yes. What is that transition like? Um, initially, it was uh, terrifying. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> terrifying because my, my um, which tends to be very, um, uh, I'm not able to write about mountains and trees. It has a lot of things that, that are deep and they resonate. Um, so initially it was it was that it was very terrifying. But what I've realized is that um, it's transformative for me. I am more myself every time I perform. Okay. I am I know myself a little more every time I perform. I learn more about myself. Um, I'm not just perform any time I write. I learn a little more about myself. Um, so I found that the quickest way to know and, and love and accept me is is poetry. That's nice. And when did you really start writing? Young? Oh gosh. Or grown? Um, hmm. So I used to write when I was much younger. I'd always dabble. I've always, I've always been the nerd. You know, I've always been the one who, I mean, we grew up in a time where the parents were always asking me to do chores. So I was always the child who took her, her book in her, sh in her shirt and suddenly needed to go to the toilet. So I could read in peace. <laughs> wow, that is true. Some children you have to force them to read, but they had to pull you away from. Oh course. yeah, absolutely. And I'll be on the toilet. My pants has not left my waist. I'm just sitting on the toilet, fully clothed, reading, because that's the one place you're not disturbed. Okay. I mean, after an hour, somebody's gonna figure something just like this. But um, so that was that was one of the the, the biggest things with regards to. Um, that when I was about 17, mm -hmm. I remember I wrote a poem um, about, you know, being 17 and going through various things at the time and the transition, coming into adulthood. And, and uh, my mom got the poem um, and she read it and she internalized it. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I realized how, at the time, I just saw it as dangerous um, that my poems could be. Cause what happened subsequently is my mom um, 
she made copies and she distributed it to my aunts and my cousins. Oh my god. That's like somebody taking a piece of your diary and just And it wasn't just sharing out of, oh that's so nice, it was more how could she say that and how could you feel that and, and uh, my cousins are calling me. Um, calling me to his workplace to speak with me and there was a whole family So did that make you want to stop writing for a while? I stopped writing for 12 years. Wow. 12, 12, you were 17 years. and 12. Yeah. That cut for 12 years. So I started writing again in my 30s. I stopped. Um, yeah, I just stopped writing. So, um, I mean, I have no, I'm older and I've understood why, why, what was done was done because um, the way that I wrote, even now how I write now, back then, um, it would be construed as um, painful, even if that was not intentional. Because it was just raw. Okay. You know. And um, she probably didn't see you in the light on that you saw yourself in. Exactly. So she, it was a um, bit different for her as well. It was difficult. So I understand that. Um, but it, it really did stop the writing, at least in that sense. And I remember I used to write sneaking so on a napkin at a restaurant as stuff that could disappear pretty much and stuff that i did not have to go back to and i was dating a guy at the time and he used to put them together so he so he sees me writing so he took it and, he, and then he had a folder where he put it together and um and then i realized and during that time during the 12 to 15 years i was very much um, not grounded as a result because that's what I've understood with, with, with writing for me. Um, so even decisions that I made and things that I got into, it, it just seemed to be the natural progression of what I was supposed to do because I was not operating from soul, I was not operating from an authentic place. Okay. I was pretty much just going through emotions. Um, when I came back into writing then it, it was a very painful thing because now I'm like, eh, this is not really what I want. And, and so you're more critical of yourself. Absolutely. You back to it. Okay. And recognizing that um, it, it does require you to, to take stock. So yeah, so that was <laughs> that was an interesting occurrence. Um, but coming coming back into writing because you never really left. Mm -hmm. But you just had this this. So there was this void. So you fill this void with work and family and. But when everything settles, we know ourselves the best when it's quiet. True. Sure. And so when you everything came back to your safe spaces. Yeah, right? there was there was nothing. So if I was not outside of you know relationship children, I felt like I I did not exist within my own life. Um. And um, so writing does that for me. It it, it, it cements my who it is that I am. <laughs> so how long did it take you to get uh, to complete a poem? Um, my cousin says it's, it's a, a gift. Um, it has its, its pluses and its, its downsides, its advantages and disadvantages. In that, um, I write when I feel so I would literally pick up a paper and write until I'm done. So it may be anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Uh -huh. But when I'm done, I'm done. So it's always a so challenge it's, for it's me like to just, I just pour. Yeah. So it's always a challenge for me to memorize my pieces because I write, I put it down, and I go about my business, and then I write again, I put it down, and then I just put them. You know. I hope you can find them. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, it's not disappearing anymore. No, no, it's it's so more. We have them. <laughs> so I just email them to myself. Oh, okay, okay. Um, if it's on the internet, it's going. Forward. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but then I know persons who write, and then they go over it and they memorize it. So they've written down and they try to memorize it. But for me, it's it's just it's cathartic. So it's a release. It's like giving birth. Okay, I think that's the way people should probably relate more to it. If like you're more authentic. You, yeah, want true. Kind of. you don't go back and say, okay, I don't think somebody was like this, you write for you, and then whoever has something similar. Yeah, exactly. Relates. So it speaks. Um, and so, mm -hmm. and I, I, so I finally had to edit my writing because I feel like I'm editing the emotion that I was experiencing when I wrote it. Okay. So yeah. I, I wrote, I, this is what it was. And it doesn't, and that's the thing about art. Art is very much a personal thing. Mm -hmm. So I cannot write art that's going to appeal to you. That isn't art. 
art that has a life and a vision and a voice all of its own. The whole aspect of it is to create art and let the wild attract your tribe, so to speak. Okay, so what advice would you have for somebody listening who is writing, but they're not as probably strong or as confident in what they're doing, but they still need that external help to improve their work? How do they improve but still be themselves at the same time? Do you have any um, I think in, in um, ancient Chinese as well as um, African, there is a phrase that the sacred person is a fool. I think we need to get comfortable with being foolish. Mm -hmm. We need to be comfortable with being embarrassed and getting it wrong. We need to be comfortable for you to you know, stop trying to fix it. Just write. Because you, um, there's a photographer who has a quote that says your first 10,000 photos are the worst, and you would know that. <laughs> so I feel like that, that one's actually, as a photographer, definitely, it's like you take and take and take, and you're like, this is not what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Until exactly. you do it over and over, you exactly. and then when people actually see what you could see, they're amazed because like, they didn't know you could see that. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's how I see it. Um, I think sometimes what holds us back is we too focus on the finished product. I never know what a poem is going to sound like before I write it. Mm. I don't sit there and go, okay, I want to write about Korean, but I want it to end with the shoes. I just go like, you start with what she has some beautiful eyes. And then, and then, and then, and then I'm done. I'm like, okay, so yeah. Okay, so if we will perhaps play a game where I send some words or phrases at you. Do you think you could probably come up with like a like a quick paragraph, a quick something freestyle? I don't know. I guess we're done right now. <laughs> so what is going to be our first word? All right. So today is a nice sunny day. Perhaps you said you wanted a natural, nature fresh, therapy. nature therapy. Yes, nature therapy. Let's let's go with that. How about something about days by the river or river? Anything that comes to you. Like that's so what do you great. want? A sentence or uh, like a like a quick. Paragraph, shot. Something to do with the river? Yeah. Whatever whatever comes to you. Hmm. Stop whenever see. you feel comfortable. If it lasts 10 minutes, we're okay with that, you know. Usually <laughs> <laughs> sure I have pen and paper for this. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, well, this bag will not be empty. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever comes out, comes out. Uh, okay. Um. Something just shifted on me. I don't know. You really don't. Right, that's okay. Okay. Look at this. Because it just breaks something. It's not really a problem. <laughs> Can I? Okay. Okay. Um. There's something beautiful about what? There's something appealing about crystal clear clarity. There is something wholesome about having something wash over you and renew you. There is something cathartic about the river. The river has no beginning, there's no middle point, there's no end, it just flows. It seeks nothing from you, it requires nothing of you. It just exists, and even in the midst of its existence, it changes you. You're never the same when you come to the river. Even on a surface level, you you leave wet, you leave cold, you leave drenched, you leave invigorated. The river calls to you, not the other way around. It needs nothing of you. To meet someone like that would be awesome. Yeah, hey, I guess I think I just went, <laughs> just went through that with you, you know, just feeling the water running over my feet while I'm just, you know, in that vibe. All right, so that was supposed to be the warm up, but you just went all in there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm gonna try two more. Um, all right, so I know that you are. I've never done this before. This is actually pretty good. Yes, yes, yes. You know, kind of freestyle it off. Yeah. It is so it is how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um so you are a mother of um girls, yes. correct? Yes. 
so this one is a little heavy but let's see if you could keep it like condensed condensed okay. probably uh, let's say let me see about growing up because then you know you have to do that trend the transition phase of growing up so growing up as a child yeah or growing child. up as a mom uh, no like if you're talking to her mm -hmm. or one of them and just basically giving like a little advice or like she's probably afraid of growing up or anything probably something pops up like mm -hmm. growing up like the transition of from a child to, to adulthood yeah mm -hmm. i'm assuming you probably wrote that somewhere probably wrote it in the back of your head and say i'm gonna, I'm gonna say this yeah that wouldn't work now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, I'm finding it's, it's 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 easier to just speak from that than to remember something. Ah, oh, okay. Um, let's see. Mm. Oh, so heavy. No, no, it's it's just. Um, I think because I have more than one daughter, I'm literally just seeing. All images coming in at once. I'm trying to pick one. Ah. You're a girl. You're a black girl. You're a black Caribbean girl. By definition, you're already starting three steps back. More will be expected of you. What will be demanded of you as a result great attempts to exploit you will be made but remember you are a girl like your great grandmother was like your grandmother was like your mother is remember you're a black girl carrying the line of ancestors strong women is in your dna you're a caribbean girl this is where people go to relax, to find themselves, to rejuvenate, to renew, to vacate. Your home is where people run away to. You are everything that you need. You have everything that you need. You're a girl. You're a black girl. You're a Caribbean girl. So what's the problem? Recited that from something you already wrote. Never. <laughs> this, and I'm smiling because it was literally coming. And you're hearing now. yourself say. And I'm hearing myself <laughs> say without having written it. So I was having like a almost an out of body experience because I'm listening to me say without knowing what the next line is gonna be, and at the same time I'm like, ooh, that. Yeah, so it was just a whole Well then it's recorded so you get to see yourself as again if you yeah, write it out. <laughs> I'm gonna see my creative process before. <laughs> that was that, yeah, was, yeah. that was interesting. Alright, and the last one, I'm gonna let you probably freestyle what you're feeling probably about your day. You said you like, you know, it's it's already afternoon time, so most of the day has already happened. So you know just mm, whatever comes to you. <laughs> I hope my, my cousin move today, carry some stuff and go through. And um, during the entire journey of putting stuff together, putting memories together, the good ones and not so good ones, was that induced laughter, was that induced tears, you had a conversation about relationships and the way that. Um, Things unfold differently. And the way that society's demands on what a relationship should look like often comes too much of a demand on a relationship. That oftentimes we are not part of our relationship. Stereotypes, the roles that we're supposed to play, kind of just <laughs> eliminates the, the, the main persons in the relationship. just start and you met someone and you just get into a relationship and you just start dating them all you see is them, all you hear is them, all you smell is them, all you breathe is them. 
towards the end. You don't even know them. You know what your mother said, and your sister said, and your brother said, and his uncle said, and his mother said, and our relationships are crowded. And we're surprised when there's no space. You literally just changed the lighting in this room while saying that. <laughs> like this is this is this is beyond me. You changed the lighting in the room and it came back and you were done. Wow. You cannot make this up. <laughs> that that is that is wow. Um I'm gonna need a minute, I'll say that one. Yeah, this one is this one has me too. I'm like, what? <laughs> Like I've never seen this like you changed it. Ooh. Okay, um yeah. This was, wow. This was... Um before we before we end, let's just touch a little bit on the Dao Arts Poetry Group. Ah yes. Yes, what ideas I believe you were one of the The teams. founders, yes. yes. Um so Dao is the three of us, myself, Neil Seri and Liz Face Alfield. We're the founders of Dao And of course we have members of Dao yes. You know, Korea and um, Jordan. Um, Louise, all of our, all of our performers are the art. We just, you know, the people that just do there. Um, but we have been, um, each of us, of course, are spoken word poets, and we wanted an outlet aside from just head punk. We wanted something that was in the south of the island. Um, so we're like, I think generally the universe operates where. Something bothers you long enough, it's because you're supposed to do something about it. Um, so we came together and we're like, hey, you know what, let's, let's do this. We'll figure it out on the way. We're just going to leap and figure it out on the way. The basis is not just to create artists a platform um, and to give them publicity, but to create the kind of thing that they can start to get paid for their work as little as it may be. If um, we are able to, to you know, and as it grows, we do that so they can get some level of recognition for the effort. Because artists, I mean, artists work, and it's a different kind of work because it, it, it takes from the soul, and then you share it with the world, um, and you're depleted afterward. So that was that was the basis. And even after we had, um, we could not have found a name yet. For it, and then we, we sat and we were like, okay, we need a name for this, and we're going back and forth. And I'm like, well, we're out, you know, what is it we're trying? We're out. Okay. You know, you are out, I'm out. Thou art, we are. And that's what it is, that's how it I am, you are. Thou art. Thou art. <laughs> oh, so that's, that's the slogan. That's the slogan. Okay. And um, so it's all encompassing. And then we, we just have one basic rule is that um, you just maintain respect for persons out. So we do not create an environment. We have no tolerance for negativity or bullying or anything like that. Okay. And you come in and you, you present your art. What, what we found is that it attracts, like we said, the vibe attracts the tribe. So it attracts persons who are hungry for it. And that's what you realize. You know sometimes you're hungry for something, but you don't know you're hungry for it because you've never tasted it before. Um. It's like, You've never had pineapple, but you're like, man, I could go for something. And somebody gives you pineapple and you're like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's, that's, exactly. that's, that's Yes. Do you make juice of this? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was the biggest thing. So I love I love what it is that we're doing. Um, and I was saying that to Liz and Neil, one of the things I love most is how grounded we are. Okay. So it, it, it's, the, the goal never changes, it never becomes about um, fun fair. We know that will come because the art is epic. Okay. So it will automatically generate its own, you know, silo and zone. Um, but just to give persons the opportunity. And then you see persons who have, like Louise, um, who wrote years ago but has never performed. Mm -hmm. And then you watch people just open up and bloom because they now have a, an avenue to, to express and Jordan, who used to sing in Jamaica, but from the time she came back, she hasn't. Yeah. And then, you know... They're you, just waiting for that right. moment. Okay. And, and of course, these are words from them, and you just see persons bloom, and people have a glow. Because art is soul. People have a glow when you, you're operating from a soul level. And, and that's the beauty of it. People 
we are created from love. We get caught up in all of this stuff, but that's who we are inherently. And if you, you don't believe me, do something from a soul level, like help an old lady cross the street and explore how good you feel. Definitely. You know, you hold a baby to your face or a kitten and explore how good you feel. Um, and these are, these are things that you gain absolutely nothing from, but you hide for the whole day. You're smiling at everybody for the whole day. You're just good for the whole, because that's just who we are inherently. And I think anytime you do an action, observe how you feel, and it tells you. you know, so you do more of that. Yeah, I definitely came to um, one of the shows, and it's like, well, the first time I came to the show, actually, it was like, oh, wow, I feel like I know these people mm -hmm. already. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a nice space. The energy is healthy. It's positive. You know, people are coming here and say, okay, you, you don't have judges. Mm -hmm. It's just a space for you to come, show your peace, make somebody feel something, and you leave the place mm -hmm. new. You leave the place different. Yeah. That is it. It's, it's, it's a family. Nice. Not a dysfunctional one. <laughs> but you know, oh it's, 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 it's to create a safe space because um, as artists, we are the wed ones in society. That's just the reality of it. We are the wed ones. We are the ones with the fedora hats and the bright colored clothes. <laughs> Why is she coming for me today? Yes, and I love the hat. Why? <laughs> but that's just the reality. And that is what it is supposed to be. Because artists are our, our, our purpose, I want to say our job, is to express what is the pulse that is happening within a particular space that persons may not have the words to do so, or the music, or the talent to do so, that is your job. And the reason in tyrannical societies, the first person is to take out are the artists, because mm. artists will agitate. Because when, when a piece of art is, people are going to res resonate with it. Mm. If you come and you now discuss um, molestation, or you discuss corruption, or yeah, people are going to feel it, because you're saying for the populace, you know, that's why music is so powerful, and painting is so powerful. Definitely. It's art, so I think that's. So I believe that's you have a Instagram page. Yes. Do you have a YouTube page as yet? Yes. Um, so my Instagram is Kishma Writes. My Facebook is Kishma Writes. My YouTube is Kishma Writes. Okay. <laughs> and you the same thing everywhere. Yes. Right. Lovely. Um, and the Dawat has an Instagram. Yes, Dawat. Um, S L U. Yeah. Yeah, Dawat S L U. Facebook as well. Um, we used to be seven five, but then the, the um, account had some issues. Okay. Uh, so we have to open up. So and I hope we get to see some YouTube as yes. well coming up. Um, we're working on that. We're trying yeah. to get. Um, so you know, if we can't come down. Yeah, you can always yeah pull up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we will be. We will be um, at the jazz, Mopo jazz tomorrow. Now I would have a presence. And there. tomorrow is actually the first of first May, May. 2023. Um, hopefully I will be able to be there. That's so I will have a link in the description with a few more of the other videos of you guys performing. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and before we leave, I would love if you perform one of your pieces. Just one. Ah. Just one. Ooh. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, which book? Didn't talk about book. Um, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. No, we can we can briefly. Um, yeah, you know, let's see. <laughs> um, whatever. And also, you have your books. So I believe what is, I I don't I don't want to say it wrong. Eh, why not? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Perfectly. Yes. And yes, I actually got myself a copy. I love it. I think I like the one about, um, is it me? Oh. Yes, my mm. honest one. Me. Me. Is it just me? Yeah. Like that's that, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my favorite one. Um, we'll have a link in the description for that as well. And we, before you leave, we're going to ask you to perform one of the poems from that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, this is the second book. Um, shh, not so loud. Conversations we're not comfortable having. So is that with more conversations or just all so, poems or just yeah it's poems but they're more um, I like the name suggests so it speaks about um, uh, pedophilia by those in uniform it speaks about female sexuality it speaks about corruption it speaks about colonial colonialization it speaks about racism it speaks about the conversations that we need to have but we're not always uh -huh. comfortable with. So and why not is more poems are more personal. 
okay, you know, um, and then I had them and my daughter was like, Mom, you should write a book. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, you should put them together and write a book. I'm like, eh, why not? And then you named it. Yep. <laughs> and then I lost it on her birthday. Um, so that was a gift to her. Okay, so this one is called Me. And of course it is for Cabrian. It's her favorite. Um, I think this is my first, second time performing this ever, so bear with me. Me. I am her. I am the one who removes the full moons from the sun and feeds birds. I am the one who likes to sit on the ground and thinks that my hair looks best when it is wild. I am the one who will listen to you when you need an air, without judgment. I am soft. I am gentle. I am kind. I am her. I am the one who severs ties with surgical precision. If you attempt to deceive, to belittle, or to mess with my peace. I am the one who will burn the bridge at both ends. I am decisive. I am direct. I am harsh. I am her. I am the one who loves fully and deeply right down to your faults. I am the one who is all in. I require respect, honesty, drive, and affection. I love so deeply that it changes the way you walk. It changes the way that you see yourself. I am her. I am the one who loves hugs from behind, passionate kisses, and being caught between you and the wall. I am the one who you will have to learn, as this will not be conveyed with just a look or words, but with subtle and deliberate movements that appear also innocent. I am her. I am the one who cries at sad movies, but will remain straight face, but will remain straight face in the middle of an accident scene, a chopping or physical trauma. I am the one who will calmly dress a wound or splinter fracture, but whose heart will bleed for you when you tell me of your childhood pain. I am her. I am the one who may flirt with you briefly because I feel that you could use a confidence boost and a reminder of your own divine power, <laughs> not because I want you. I am her. I am the one who cries when I hear a child being physically punished because I feel every lash in my soul. I am the one who has felt terrible when I have struck my own and I am the one who have vowed never to do so again. I am her. I am the one who will walk away from a friendship or a relationship with such finality. I am the one who has understood that love alone is not enough if your wolf isn't factored in, I am the one who has grown to love the drawing board. And I know fully that loyalty has an expiration date. I am her. I am the one who is constantly laden with guilt because I feel like I am not doing enough, not being enough, even when I am giving all of my enoughs. I am the one who is hardest on myself. And I am learning daily to practice gentleness, patience, and tolerance with me. And I am her. I am the one who will stand here in front of a camera, reciting a poem and telling you more about me than anybody else close to me. I am the one pouring out my vulnerabilities to you, hoping that by the end of the day when the applause ends, the judgment disappears. Thank you. All right, you have heard her, Kishima Seri, right? Um, I will have the links in the description and somewhere around this video, as well as I just want to say thank you for joining you us here today. You can always reach out to her if you want her to do any, any performances for you, mm -hmm. you know? Like I said, she's has many layers. <laughs> do personalizations as well so yeah um we write for you of course it would kind of require some kind of interview like this because then i would have to know what to do so. yeah we could get one of the writers who don't perform mm -hmm. who actually write for persons you know yeah we can have that all right so once again thank you for joining us on our show and tune in next time you know click that notification bell <laughs> all right bye, bye guys <laughs>